to CSJ head coach Phil Bartlett greeting the umpy Owls. University of Maine Press Isle Owls taking on CSJ in Sunrise Conference basketball. Saints at 101 in the conference right now. Having lost a close game to Fisher College and then of course winning against Maine Machias. We'll get the starting lineups now. The PA announcer and the Fighting Saints will be in there. Looks like they're blue uniforms again today. So big game tomorrow. Also, I'll have that for you on Munger Vision. It'll be Fort Kent, Maine. As they get set to go through their ritual as they get introduced. Raheem Smalls coming out, number one, having a great first year here at CSJ. Of course, the leader of the pack, Jamie Ryda, number 11, be the starting point guard. Number 14, Antonio Wilburn. Tony Wilburn wearing number 14 and has been coming on strong, strong, stronger as this semester has gone along. KJ Jackson. Jackson back in action with the start here today. And of course, the English major who has gotten an A plus here this first and second semester, Evan Yobbs. That is the starting lineup for CSJ. They'll have the National Anthem, and I'll have the opening tip-off for you after the fade. Munger Vision, Peg TV Channel 15, bringing you Saints basketball. will be the Saints in their dark blue uniforms, and the Umpy Owls will be in the uh, University of Maine. Prescott will be in the white uniforms. The starting lineup for Umpy will have Vasquez wearing number one, Corrigan 13, Manifold number 23, 31 is McDonald, and 52 is Coffin. As the officials get set, again, CSJ started the second semester off with a rousing come from behind win over Castleton State College. That was followed by a powerhouse Clarkson team coming in. And then, you know, actually CSJ played an outstanding game against Clarkson, ended up losing that game. But, uh, and then Fisher College, so it was three games in a row to start the second semester. Fisher College was a game that went back and forth and was decided in the final minute, 93-89 Fisher College. And then, of course, the big win against Sunrise Conference opponent, Maine Machias. Yeah, what they're doing, I'm finding personnel to run shot clock, game clock, and Fairhaven head coach of girls basketball, Kyle Wilson, come on, he's gonna run, he's gonna run one of the functions at the, uh, yeah, so they're gonna have Kyle run the game clock and the shot clock will be ran by CSJ staff as they seem to be all set. KJ Jackson will jump center out there. And in case you didn't know, it's a 35 second shot clock, 20 minute half, so overtime if necessary. And a delay to the start of the ball game. As I believe we're all set. Upcoming games for CSJ, they're on the road next week. They got a big game against Vermont Tech. That's always a, a good ball game. But this year, Vermont Tech with an excellent club. That should be an interesting matchup. Fort Kent, of course, will be at a later date on Channel 15. All that game for you. And then in February, February 4th, SUNY Canton will be here for a men's and women's doubleheader starting at 5 o'clock. And then Sage College, February 10th at 7 o'clock, will be a men's basketball game only. And I think we are all set to get going, as you can see. KJ Jackson getting the start, like I said again today. And Raheem Smalls, who's uh, first year in the league, he's, he's getting a lot of uh, attention. Votes toward that all conference team. Also out there, Tony Wilburn didn't start the first season, didn't play the first semester, I mean, but he's playing the second semester, playing very well. Evan Yops is a returning season veteran from last season having an incredible year offensively he's like a completely different man out there and of course jamie Ryder wears the superman's outfit for csj and he's actually this year his minutes have been been able to be minimized somewhat compared to what he used to play every minute of the game and the officials seem set and we are good to go so manifold will jump up against jackson and we're finally ready to play some basketball the girls game that was prior to this was easily won by the Owls of University of Maine Presque Isle. So the Owls win the opening tip off. They'll go down inside and the reverse slip way off the mark and ball will be tipped back out and controlled by nobody right now. Boy, it's a lot of action in this opening sequence, but no basket yet and a foul called. But I tell you, what gets me is, of course I'm a hometown fan, but I saw about three violations and three fouls they could have called prior to that, and now they'll call a foul down inside on the Saints, and that will send number 31, McDonald, to the line. So Clifford McDonald going to the line, and I'm just waiting to see who the foul is on. Evan Yops will pick up the foul. 
Well, that was 18 seconds of ugly basketball right there. And that shot will keep that ugly basketball going. All right, settling now. CSJ basketball. A tradition on Munger Vision. That shot will drop. And that'll be the first points of the ball game. Makes it one nothing. The Owls over the Saints. And Jamie Wright, I just coming into your picture now as I came too fast, too forward on the camera. And Yops will go down in the corner and Smalls. They're looking for Jackson down inside. Now he'll get the ball at the free throw line. Baseline inside and blocked outside. That was Yops that made the move coming in. And uh, it'll be last touch by CSJ. I believe it was Wilburn with the touch, but it's going to be the Owls basketball. And it's been a big week of basketball here at CSJ. Remember last weekend started on a Friday night with Castleton and Clarkson and then Fisher and then it started right back up again Thursday with Maine Machias. Today's game with the Maine Presque Isle and then Fort Kent tomorrow and that's a long three ball put up there by Kopp and Saints again this year notoriously slow starters. Big in the middle and strong at the end is what they do but beginning of the ball game it has seems to take them a while. Their coach jokingly said to the team during the week, he's just going to spot the other to put 20 points on the scoreboard at the very start of the ball game, and that way the team will come out playing good in the beginning, playing well in the beginning. As Vasquez with the quick push, we get it to Clifford, and Clifford working against Yops. Offensive foul, great call, an offensive foul. Yops, a little embellishment there, but it was a foul all the way. As Clifford dropped his shoulder like a fullback and just plowed through there. Well, that was good stuff if you're a Saints fan, which I am. Rios is going to be coming in. Brendan Rios in his first year at CSJ, and what an impact. He's looking for Newcomer of the Year award. I think he's got to be in the running for that, honestly. Oh, great look down to Jackson, and then he handles the ball. Double team will spin out of it. Mike Humphrey travel. Yeah, KJ got just a move in there, gyrating, and that'll be a travel call, and that'll be a turnover, and it stays 4-0. The Owls. There's Coffin. Boy, he's a big guy, number 52. He, you know, Prescott, Maine is way up there in Maine. And they have a lot of lumberjacks up there, and he looks like he could be Paul Bunyan's brother. And that's going to be a foul on Ryder. Yeah. And you do not see him get emotional like that very often, but he uh, made his presence felt as the trash talking, picking up early in this ball game. And I mean, to me, he'll be physical and chippy, and it'll be a very good game to watch. <laughs> The grab. Yeah, you want to talk about some nasty stuff. That Fisher CSA women's basketball game, that was just bad stuff. And Jackson bodied up too close and reached out and got the hold call. And CSA all of a sudden with three team fouls already. That'll be the first fall on KJ Jackson. So obviously a non shooting fall, be possession fall side out. Almost a steal by Smalls and Coffin pulled the shot down, went inside, and they're just going to work it inside outside. A high low game to Clifford. Three ball faked, and I tell you, Raheem Smalls has gotten in the way of Coffin. And boy, there's some wrestling going on, and it's going to be last touch by a couple Saints. As I'm trying to see who's getting up. It looks like Smalls is definitely one of the Saints, and that's going to be Wilburn, number 14, the other Saint. They both were battling hard for the ball, went out of bounds off one of them. Vasquez. And they want to penetrate and nice defense that time by Jackson moving his feet up and no. Long rebound. Gonna be controlled by Kopp and he's gonna put it on the floor. Go up and can't kiss it home. Daya. They got away with the one there. Push from behind on number 23. Manifold they didn't call. So the Saints looking for the first points. Almost three minutes into this first half. And like I said, don't get discouraged with this. The Saints, for some reason, are just notoriously slow starters. That's a good one. Three ball by Ryder. We'll make it four to three. The Owls with the lead. They've got the ball, and we're on the way down the floor with Vasquez. Rios now heading over to the scorer's table. We'll be checking in for the Fighting Saints. Of course, the Saints with a deep bench this year. A lot of new players. Oh, what a unusual move by Manifold. But he got the basket, makes it 6-3 Owls. 
Yops has hit from the outside well this year. They've got to be aware of that defensively, the Owls do. Wilburn on the catch, got hooked. Yeah, he got held on to on the move. And that will be on Vasquez, will be called for that. And they're going to allow Rios to come in, and that will be Rios for Wilbur, and that will be the change. And Ryan will take the ball out of bounds. He'll run that stack formation on the near side of the box. And Jackson, oh, he was the target. Clifford made the steal. Into the front court come the Owls. They'll swing it all the way over to Kopp and up, and Jackson will make the play as they're looking for Manifold. And that's going to be, oh, that's a terrible call. That's two on Ryda, and that was a leaner and a half by number 13, Corrigan. He was almost staying at a 45 degree angle when he got hit. And this is not typically Ryda's game. He usually does not let people get under his skin. But he is uh, more likely somebody took a clove of garlic and put it on his tongue or rubbed some cayenne pepper across his bare butt because he's certainly got a problem today. I'm not on his case. He just, he's just, he's ornery. He's fired up. He's nasty, and I just not like him. I kind of like it. I don't like the foul situation. And there's the Basque as they post up against Jackson. That was Manifold who will get the points. Again, the problem with that, they just gave up the spot. It, you know, defensively, Yops will get it. It's going to count. And do his impression again of Michael Jordan out there is Evan Yops as he'll spin to the bucket and make the basket. And one coming up. So the biggest concern right now is the two fouls on Ryda. And for the Owls, number 34, Jeremy Brock will be coming in the ball game right now. And he'll be coming in for Clifford, 31. I'm sorry, Clifford McDonald. I gotta get full names, here we go. So McDonald will sit down with 16-11 to go in the first half and have a breather. And it looks like Corrigan now will Bring the ball up in an 8-6 ball game. Main with the lead. Main press aisle for Vasquez. And Smalls got a hand on it. Couldn't quite get it away from the Owls. And that time that shot short by Coffin. Smalls all the way in the front court. Spins and yeah, I got Oh, what a late call. What a terrible late call. They call it on Smalls. Yeah, they call it an offensive foul. And he actually had to check with the official. Now, this is what happened. The official on the close, this near side of the court blew the whistle. He initiated the foul. And then he stood there and didn't know what to call. And he looked across the court. And the official across the court told him what to call. I mean, that is about as bad as you can get right there. And right there, that's how you know it's a bad call. Maine came down and just blatantly threw the ball away. And that's fate right there. And Phil letting him know. Yeah, and he's telling him just what I said. Watch Channel 15. It's the best coverage. He's actually got an opinion. Most sports done in the area has no opinion. It's so vanilla and commercial laden. It'll, might as well just put some headset on and go to bed. And there's a foul at almost got the basket. It's Smalls getting fired up. First of all, it's a blocking foul against Umpy that they didn't call. They called Smalls on an offensive foul. And... Fouls adding up quick. That's five fouls on CSA. Now four on Maine. Yeah. Prescott or Umpy is a shorter column. And Raheem Smalls will be up and got it. Cuts the lead to one at eight to seven. And it's been a very spirited game, which means it's been a very spirited broadcast because I do broadcast with my heart on my sleeve. And on the second shot, Raheem Smalls will tie the game at eight. So there's been a lot of action for a very low scoring first four and a half minutes. Eight to eight. Big game for both teams as far as Sunrise Conference. It's a very short season to Sunrise Conferences. <clears throat> oh, that will rim out on the attempt there <coughs> by Vasquez. <clears throat> and playing with two fouls, Ryder will back it up, pull it out. And don't forget, they do have Wilburn this year to spell him. Oh, Rios Grande with the bucket. Saints will have their first lead at 11 to eight. And he has been hitting that outside shot on an extremely consistent basis here, especially in the second semester. Inside, well defended Jackson. When a save by who else? Jobs made the save. Ryder being ridden down the floor. We'll pull it back now, let him set up the offense. That was Vasquez there defensively. 
Spencer, number three, going to be checking in for Umpy as he is at the scores table. Rios looking to go two for two. No. That time it wasn't as clean a catch more than anything. And Manifold over the top to Vasquez. Tempo of the ball game is right where the Saints actually would like it. That's Manifold way outside and drains it. Tied at 11. The big guy from Maine just draining it. Oh, we got the makings of a classic here on Munger Vision. Smiles to Jackson. It should have been a foul called on the defense, but they'll bring the ball down on the steal. Triplet and Wilburn both at the scores table for CSJ. Nice grab, and Corrigan was staying right in front of Coach Bartlett, and it's an easy call for Coach Bartlett. As Corrigan was out of bounds, Yops and Jackson will sit down for CSJ, and that's taking place with 13.50 to go. In the first half, so you can see Ryan will take the ball out of bounds. That'll bring Wilburn in the backcourt. Not only will you have the touch up, but you'll actually set the offense up now. To Ryda, fakes the three, drew the defense to him, and then Wilburn steps inside the three point arc and it hit the cable. That holds the cable. That's part of the backboard, and that's why it's out of bounds. That's a good call because I can see the cable actually. No. Wiggle, wobble from the ball hitting it. So we'll stay tied at 11. Oh, Wilburn read it. Stepped in the pass lane, made the steal, crossed over, going to kick it back on the trail. Oh, that's a terrible call. Wow. Another offensive foul called on the Saints. And I believe that is their fourth offensive foul here in the first half with 13.23 left to go. And the coat has come off from Coach Bartlett, so he's now officially perturbed with the officiating. First fall on Wilburn, six on the Saints. Into the corner it goes Spencer with his first shot. No, the weak side rebound will come down to Rios. Now it's up to Jamie Ryan into the front court. He'll slow it down between circles. Good transitional defense by the Umpy Owls as they got back nicely. Triplet, he's one of the most pliable, flexible, bendable players I have seen in a long time out there. And Wilburn will miss the pull-up jumper. Rebound to Spencer, and he'll get it out to Corrigan. 12.45 to go in the first half. We're still tied at 11 in this Sunrise Conference matchup between CSJ in the blue and Umpy in the white. University of Maine Prescott. That's going to break the tie. As Warner with a three ball. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Fifth offensive foul called on the Saints. They got Rios on a push-off. Why? I don't know why they just didn't put their umpy owls uniforms on and play out there. That is uh, brutal, one-sided officiating. And that is going to become Rios' first personal foul. Team seven fouls already on the Fighting Saints with 12.27 to go in the first half, five of them offensive. And it's just, wow, it's going to be a tough broadcast for me because I'm already getting in trouble. So, And again, you could tell it was a bad call because they missed the free throw. Rios up, actually had his arm hit on the shot, no call there. Run, Smalls go up and make the basket. 14-13, CSJ down by one. And it doesn't get any easier tomorrow as the number one team in the conference, Fort Kent, will come to town. Ball fake, good help defense as Wilburn came over as Smalls bought the ball fake. But don't forget, I'll have the Grand Union player of the game, the CSJ player of the game shirt donated by Grand Union. Seven seconds on the shot clock, Spencer. Oh, get out of here, the shot was blocked and the ball came right back to him and a smart alert play by Umpy and they'll put the rejection up and in. 16-13, the Owls with the lead, Ryder looking for the tie, got it, tie ball game. We're tied at 16. Another year of Munger Vision and that, another year of CSJ basketball. Tell you, that was actually a fall on Rio said they didn't call, so. Oh, Wilburn going baseline to baseline. And the Saints retake the lead at 18-16. And a timeout called 
by Umpy, and the Saints crowd fired up. 18-16 CSJ with the lead, Han Mungervision. Okay, so there's two Vasquez's on the Owls roster. Number 20 in the ballgame right now is Miguel. Miguel, I'm sorry, Vasquez. So when I get into the ballgame, when they're both in there playing, don't get confused. It's, but again, triplet. Got lucky, gave up a good spot down low defensively. They didn't get burned, but here comes Ryder. Corrigan will pick him up this time well outside the arc. They're all shooting three balls out there unguarded. 25 seconds on the shot clock. And Saints will set up that half-court offense. Now, it looks like, well, I'm trying to identify. I think they've gone zone defense, the Owls have. They have Wilburn on the give and go. Went, didn't make it. It's going to stay down this end. It's going to be last touched by Warner, Michael Warner, number 32. That'll be right at going to the baseline. Looking to inbounds pass, and yeah, nothing happened inside. Rios became the option up top, and he was well guarded by Corrigan. Long three, Ryda. Got it again! Ryda doesn't have to get fired up too much, boy. He's right on the edge of a huge ball game. 21 16 Saints, and yeah, foul. Nope, stepped on the inline. I actually, now I actually thought that time Triplet leaned out with the waist for CSJ and bumped him out of bounds, but things starting to even off now. So with a five point lead at the midway point of the first half, Saints got it going out. Like I said, notoriously slow starters, but they got it going out. Like I said, they're good in the middle and strong at the end, but almost seem like they don't get out of bed in the beginning. Triplet will miss it, the little putback by Triplet. Manifold going down court. Vasquez with the grab will need somebody on the trail, and no, oh, he's going to find him down, and defensive breakdown. Warner all alone. We'll put the bunny shot up and in. Little bounce pass on his side to Rios. Small's gonna make the move, goes up and had the shot blocked. He's gonna be chased down and recovered by triplet. 17 on the shot clock. Ryder with a high arcing shot. You know what? I believe that was a pass for the dunk for Smalls. Wilburn with the bump, no call there. And they're almost getting back to even. And oh, no call there. Oh, that's terrible officiating the other way. That should have been something on the Saints. I mean, come on, man. Get in the game and make some calls here. Get control of the basketball game. That was such a, oh, and then the Saints get a basket out of the other end. Oh, that was so bad for the Saints the other end. I mean, I'm a Saints fan, and that was awful. Dane Yops coming in the ball game along with Romel Anderson for CSJ's. Corrigan got below the free throw line, but he had a lot of blue jerseys around him. Warner to Manifold. Corrigan three ball in it, short. Rebound, Coffin up, too hard off the glass. Rebound tipped out, and Vasquez will save it to right up ahead to Rios. He'll let the defender go by, and he's a left-hander anyway, so that was an easier shot for him than it looked. 25-18, and it's been quite a run. Now, I'm not sure why, for Maine, some of the starters are still sitting on the bench. Like McDonald, he played so well, but he's, he's been on the bench a long time. Now, I know it's only a seven-point deficit. Coffin up, under, tipping, no good, tipping, no good. One more time, foul. Whoa, the Saints got to get, well, first of all, they're too far in the basket, to be simple about it, the rebound. But they gave up way too many rebound chances there, second chances, and they got burned by it. And, and two shots coming up for number 23, Patrick Manifold. And all of a sudden, the gym becomes quiet as 31 Clifford McDonald is at the scores table getting set to come in along with Aaron Hutchins. And oh, Evan Yops also coming in for CSJ. So Manifold going to step up to the line with 8.04 to go. That was small second personal fall for CSJ. As we're set with the sub shot, everybody's in position. Now Mana foiled with the coil, the shot, and gone good. Boy, triplet with a great box out. And then the outlet pass to Ryder. 
There's Anderson in the corner to Yops. Now, Dane Yops has come off the bench this season and has provided quite a spark of offense in his first year here at CSJ. 7.46 left first half. Hutchins gets the pass off to Vasquez. Oh, a nice pass down inside. They're playing defense in front that time, Triplett was. And they, they just burned him with the pass down inside. Jackson, K.J. Jackson, going to be coming in for the Fighting Saints at the next opportunity. This is now at the scores table. Dane Yops to Evan Yops. Lost the ball. Was going to bring it back on reversal and just lost to Anderson. Almost gets the steal off from Vasquez. And Hutchins up top. Now, Hutchins easy to find. He's got those electric sneakers on out there. I believe they're orange. Count the basket. And that time again, Triplett played defense from behind, but the problem right there, he was backpedaling all the time. He was playing defense, and that's never going to work out for you. And Manifold going back to the line. The lead cut to three now at 25-22. Yeah, and it must be that McDonald coming in for the shooter. Manifold. And Manifold again will miss his third free throw in a row. Damn, they got some spirited fans for CSJ here today on every free throw. It's like at Duke when they all cheer and make noise when they're taking the free throws. Oh! Anderson. Now Anderson was doing that a lot at the start of the season. Then he had an ankle injury that sidelined him for several games and he's just really never got back into the, the lineup or into an offensive rhythm again. Maybe today will be his day. Vasquez there spun off from the uh, defense of Anderson. Vasquez waiting for the screen and going to be a foul on yeah, Anderson. That's a good call. I have no problem with that. He didn't go below the screen. He didn't go above the screen. He just went through the screen. That'll be the 10th team foul. It's two shots now for Umpy, and they're, they're right back in the ballgame, down by six. Remember, they had the lead for a while, and at, at, I believe it was eight to two. Could have been eight to nothing. I know it was, a, it was, it was ugly, but. You now Manifold looking for his first made free throw, I believe, here in the first half. Got it. I've been I've been to many many gyms where uh, they read in the beginning of the game to the fans, not to make noise during free throws, which I, I just find that ridiculous. Seriously, lines are not hauling profanities or personal criticalness. If you're just you know like the fans here today on every free throw, they're like taking a sneeze or. Or, whoa, or something like that. I mean, this is basketball, for God's sakes. This is a game. A emotionalized crowd here. Great, they do it at Duke, they do it at North Carolina. I mean, telling them not to make noise at these other gyms. Travel called on McDonald. He was trying to post up Yops. He's got about five inches of height on Yops. And again, 10 fall. well, actually, it's about 11 falls, team-wise, to four. CSJ with the bigger number, they lead in that category, but they lead on the scoreboard also at 28-23. Anderson traveled, yeah. Those feet got moving way before the ball went down and he'll be called for the travel. And again, Hutchins looks like he's gonna run the point. And he's gonna meet Ryda past midcourt. And Vasquez waiting for a screen by McDonald. They wanted him to roll, but Yops with a nice job of dropping off defensively. So shuffle the ball down into Manifold. Go up and it's got to be a jump ball. Jump ball called. Saints basketball. Where they collapse. They, first of all, defensively, they give him that up the spot down low way too easy, but they collapsed around Manifold this time and tied him up. So they bailed themselves out. Anderson. Looking down inside for Jackson, wasn't available. Dane Yops will pull up, he hit that on a regular basis. He'll go inside if you want him to, but he likes to be right in the middle there on the floor. He'll, he can hit the three ball, he can hit the mid-range jumper, and he can go inside, and, and if he's got to flex those muscles, he can. Oh, step your travel, yeah. 
I'll tell you what happened there. KJ Jackson jumped out defensively and scared the bejesus out of that guy, Vasquez. And that's going to be a timeout taken. 30 to 23. CSJ's taking the lead with 5.13 to go in the first half on Munger Vision. I don't even get to set the table here for the Saints, but it's right at Dane Yops. Evan Yops, KJ Jackson, Ramel Anderson. And I believe that's it. And, oh, nice play by Jackson. Able to save the pass. It was blocked down. 24 on the shot clock. And Yops up. Got it. Dane Yops, or Great Dane, as we call him. He's big as a Great Dane. We'll get that shot to drop. Hutchins put the brakes on, gave the ball side to Vasquez, and the long rebound will go out of bounds, and it'll be CSJ basketball. So again, for a slow start that the Saints experienced yet again this ball game, they put 32 points on the board with 4.42 to go in the half as Wilburn and Rios is gonna be checking back in for CSJ. Here's the baseline, and up. Evan Yops off the mark. So one and done this time. Hutchins got the rebound. He'll bring it down the floor himself. Hutchins will cross over. And oh, got blocked. It was Jackson that said, get out of my house. And I'm trying to see as Ryda and Anderson will sit down. That was the change for CSJ. Hutchins will make the grab and then whip the pass for the coffin. And he threw it away. He was looking to go back to Gerardo Vasquez. And he threw the ball a little bit out of his reach and it'll become a turnover for Umpy, University of Maine, Presque Island. Wilburn. To Jackson, he'll square up from the free throw line, and no. Wilburn tipped it, didn't finish it. Dane Yops didn't finish it, and there'll be McDonald with the rebound. Umpy into the front court, and Vasquez looking for an option, and it was almost stolen away, and Rios did come up with the ball. Here's Yops to Yops to the bucket. Got it. Those Yops boys, they don't look quick, but they are. They don't look like they can be that fast, but boy, they are. 34, 23, 11 point Saints lead, 3.36 to go in the first half. Jackson could deliver the big one up and flushes it. And there's some momentum now in the CSJ Athletic Complex. Oh, that's why you gotta get down here live and watch these fighting Saints men basketball games. The lead now is plummeted, or actually ballooned to 13 and another steal as Vasquez tried to go baseline got swallowed up with nowhere to go he gave the ball up Wilburn up underneath no good there's a long outlet to Vasquez he'll get the ball and blocked by Jackson oh did he run hard for 80 feet and the Saints are alive and pumping today 23 on the shot clock and Manifold going to slow it down for a second Offensive foul called. Wilburn will draw the offensive foul. Oh, I tell you, the people that are here, they're tuned up right now. Good to see some emotion out there from Jackson. They said he sat for a game, didn't start for a couple. And tough love sometimes, hard as it is, it's the best way to get the point across and get your Best effort out of your players, and Jackson having a big ball game today. A lot of hustle. An 80 foot block as he came all the way down from one end to the other and blocked the shot. To Evan Yops. Put it on the floor one time. Rios, that's his range right there. Got it! Rios from the outside. 228 in the half, and right now, University of Maine Prescott Isle just trying to weather the last 225. And Wilburn coming up into the back court to extend the defense. Now, just to make his presence felt. Corrigan to the free throw line will push the ball inside the manifold and, manifold and he'll get it. They needed that one, man. It had been quite a run by the Saints. They're up by 14 right now. Evan Yops lost the ball, lost his footing, and lost possession. 
almost like he came down toe to toe and that's what threw him off balance. Manifold will hold. And Spencer three ball in it. Got the roll. But uh, again, they need those. They've cut the lead now down to 11 and kind of quieted the gym down for a second. Up and Rios from the baseline was no good. Dane Yop's got the foul. Yeah, it was a great job of being there in the way, but then he did reach, and that's the call. And it's two shots coming down the other end for Corrigan. He'll take two shots as Dane Yops will pick up his second personal foul. And the lesson learned here will be explained now by the coach. Okay, well, they haven't handed the ball off yet, so everybody able to switch around. As they bring Coffin down inside to bring Manifold up top, and they'll hand the ball off to Corrigan, and they'll be set now for the free throw. It's two shots. You got it. And Smalls coming in for Jackson, and been a long time, been three or four games since I've seen that kind of emotion on Jackson's face. And like I said, they need him on his team to be himself. You know, he's a good player. Lead down to nine now, so a nice job by Umpy to settle things down and make a little run themselves. And Yops will be off the mark. The other Yops got the rebound, missed the putback. Smalls kept alive. Dane Yops up, foul. Tell you what, Saints relentless on the boards right there. And Dane Yops going to be shooting two. I'll tell you, it's catching on. Somebody just hired the great Dane out there. Somebody watch a Munger Vision at home. A lot of closet viewers who don't want to admit it that they, they watch my stuff, but. And Dane Yops will get it. And I'll tell you what, we sound like a chorus as Evan Yops coming off and Jamie Ryda coming back out for CSJ with a 119 to go. And they're all set now. So Dane Yops getting set for his second shot. That was a sixth foul on Umpy and Corgan picking up his first personal. Shot clock still working as there's a minute 14 left in the first half. 29 seconds on the shot clock. Coffin had hit a couple from outside before. He wanted to go downside. And I'm not sure why it wasn't a kick defensively, but it's going to stay down into the floor with 22 seconds on the clock with Umpy. So the Owls will take the ball out of bounds. And Coffin making his way over now to the scorer's table. To McDonald inside and nice job. Great job of rotating the ball down inside and the basket will make it a nine point ball game. So it's going to be one of those Intense finishes here at CSJ. First half winding down. Wilburn to Smalls. Had the ball stripped away by McDonald. Then he skipped the rope along the inline so he wouldn't be out of bounds. And then he dribbled too long and there's the foul on McDonald. Got, boy, he did a little good, a little bad, a little good. Then the big bad is he got the foul call. And it's the one on one, the 16 foul. As Warner coming in now for McDonald, who picked up his third personal foul with 40.9 seconds to go in the first half. Almost like that substitution should take in place a little bit earlier to protect him from getting that third foul. So Wilburn with the one on one. Got it. So Tony Wilburn. Getting the second shot here, pushes lead to 10. And Wilburn will coil and release. Got them both. Smalls just getting up off the floor now for CSJ. Six seconds difference in game clock, shot clock. Ryda made the steal, tried to throw it up ahead. Corgan lost his footing and a late whistle. And Wilburn will be called for the fall. 
and Corrigan going to be going to get two shots because it's just for a long time they've been over the 10 team limit. She has, she has. And for Umpy, number 35, Ross Saunders is going to be coming in the ball game. We have to wait till the second shot. And Corrigan will get a second shot. Well, I would have anyways, that's right. They're going to bring Manifold out for Maine with 30.5 seconds to go. There is no shot clock. It's a off the mark now. And the second shot coming up by Corrigan as he will cut the lead to nine with that. Ryder. Well, you know, possibility is they will play for the last shot here. And they bring the shot clock down to 18 seconds as Ryder. He's been on this boat before. He knows the ride and down to 10 seconds, nine seconds. The motion behind's already started. Four seconds, three seconds to Wilburn. In the corner, up and got it! Dane, yups, basket's good. There's a foul at the buzzer. And I believe Smalls just picked up his third. Basket's good. The foul occurred after the after the shot. Okay, what happened? It's not on Smalls. Fouls, fouls, Smalls was fouled by Saunders. With no time left, he'll take the shots. It's the one and one. Yeah. Oh, it's been been a good game. I mean, I like a little physical and a little confrontational, and it's been all that. So. The 46-34 makes it still, he'll miss it. That's the toughest shot in basketball, players told me, when it's either technical or no time left. You go out there all by yourself. 46-34, Saints with the lead at the half. It's about the University of Maine Presque Isle. Very resilient group. They uh, weathered that run by the Saints. They're able to get the lead down to nine at one point. And now they'll get the first basket. The second half will make it a 46-36 ball game. And I got to say the same thing about the Saints. They started off in the hole, fell behind, put together a nice middle section of that uh, first half. And have the 10-point lead now. K.J. Jackson playing very well today for the Fighting Saints. Wilburn up and going to be off the mark. Yops on the weak side. Uncontested. Both the rebound and then the putback. And that'll push lead back to 12. The big foul trouble is going to be McDonald. Clifford McDonald for Umpy. He's playing with three personal fouls. Picked his last foul up inside a minute of the first half. That ball is knocked around. Picked up by the Saints. He'll have the turnover. Smalls will able to control the funny bounce and will get it. That was just tremendous focus by Smalls to control that basketball. And I'll have the Grand Union CSJ player of the game. Travel call. McDonald, again, he was waiting to post up Yops. He's waiting to feel the pressure from Yops on the back side. And Evan just played off him that time, and that caused the travel. You know, when you lean back and something's not there, you move, you fall backwards, and that's what happened. We'll have Fort Kent taking on CSJ, both men's and women, tomorrow on Channel 15 Sports. So don't forget, you go to the website, pegtv.com, click video on demand, and you can watch local sports action anytime, anywhere. And that's KJ Jackson with the basket. And Jackson, again, having a game of redemption tonight as he's played big both offensively and defensively. He's been hustling up and down the floor. 52-36 CSJ Corrigan got to the free throw line. Actually had a shot at a, uh, a free throw and Jackson there will save the ball from going out of bounds. Wilburn will go past the defender to the front court below the free throw line. We'll kick it out in the corner. There's down to Smalls on the foul by Coffin. Saints using that speed. Now I did eavesdrop in the main Prescott will huddle in that first half. And one thing that their head coach Terry Cummings was talking about was not to get in the run and gun game. Saints are way too quick. He's trying to he's down his team trying to take him off the dribble when Yumpy has the ball. It's just a bad idea. The Saints are way too quick. And right there you can see the break and the speed coming down the floor as Coffin will pick up his first personal foul. And Smalls at the line. Ended the first half. Remember with no time left on the clock and a free throw. Ended that right there. Missed him. There's Smalls. 
Home court or not, getting heckled by his hometown fans were there. His buddy's about missing the free throw. He will get the second attempt and push the score to 53-36. Ryder went on top of the screen and then lost his balance. And boy, I tell you what, Corrigan with an awkward shot, but the offensive rebound no good, and they'll be saved in bounds, and it's going to be Wilburn from Jackson. Wilburn stutter steps, goes up underneath, and lays it in. Like I said, Wilburn, the first couple games just didn't look comfortable coming into the play in the second semester, and he looks pretty comfortable now, and that's a timeout taken by Umpy as the lead has ballooned up to 55-36. CSJ with the lead on Munger Vision. And I talked about some big games still coming up in February for CSJ. The Fort Kent game will take place tomorrow. I'll have that for you at a later date on Channel 15. But VTC with a good team this year. Oh, look at that defense. Look at that help defense in the corner. And they'll strip the basketball away. It's a three on old break. And Smalls will just have enough in them to get it up and over the rim on a dunk. And Corgan just getting up now. Not only was he battling the two CSJ defenders, but he pinned himself on that sideline. Coffin will just spit the ball back out to Manifold. And it'll be a foul called on Smalls. He'll pick up his third now with 17 16 to go in the first half. And He'll check on a condition of Manifold, and he's fine. Coffin. Remember Coffin started off the ball game hitting a couple big shots for Umpy, but he's been very quiet since. Jackson doing a good job defensively down inside on McDonald. Corrigan, nowhere to go with the ball. On the dribble, on the step, and the basket by McDonald. It's been a long time between shots made by McDonald. Yops up ahead to Jackson to the hole. Got the finish. That's running the floor. That's baseline to baseline push right there. That's what Coffin did in the first half. So if he was making them, they'll be off from. Well, they're looking at each other, and they're going to say. They're going to say off from Jackson. It'll be. Umpy basketball. Okay, so there was a discussion on it. And, and Jackson in the running right now in the first place for that Grand Union player of the game, CSJ player of the game. Spencer's checked in, number three in white for Umpy. And he'll swing all the way over on a weak side. He's left alone on the perimeter. He'll put the shot up and get it. Spencer left alone will make the basket. 59-41. CSJ looking to go two and one in Sunrise Conference play and a big one tomorrow with Fort Kent. Smalls, oh what a look, what a finish. Smalls turning into the assist man there. Corrigan hobbled as he comes up and being guided by Wilburn. That's a tough matchup for Corrigan. Wilburn with the size advantage and quickness on him. Spencer looking for another one. That one halfway down popped out. It's a one and done as Ryder getting out of the way of Wilburn and he's gonna, well, I think that was blocked. I'm not really sure. Ryder dove at the basketball and then the foul flagrant, oh, intentional foul called by Yops. Yeah, he reached out and grabbed him. Yeah, Yops pleading his case, but he's not gonna win that. It'll be shots and the ball back for Humpy and it'll be Manifold taking the shots. Number 23 is he's stretching out. Oh, I'm an Ebony Ops fan, but that was a good call. He's reaching and appeared to have grabbed the player. I can tell in the crowd some of the CSJ parents don't agree with that, but. There's Manifold who struggled from the line in the first half. Struggling here in the second half also. The lead has gone to 20 points, and it's also the second foul on Evan Yops. And it should be ball back in the possession of University of Maine Press Isle as the second shot will be taking place here by Manifold, and he'll get one or two side out. And Spencer will hustle over there, number three in white for Umpy, and he'll take the basketball out of bounds. And Yops will stay in the ball game. I had a feeling he would. That wasn't like a vicious, blatant 
cut your throat type of flagrant foul. And the ball stolen away, and it's Evan Yops in the middle of the pack, and he'll curl to the left side, looking down inside the Jackson. He'll bump, go up, and uh, should have been a foul called. Yeah. Jackson looked like when he went up for the shot, it came across his arms, but instead they'll say he was out of bounds with the basketball, and it'll be Umpy with the ball, looking to go length of the court. That's, I'll tell you, that's an embellishment. They should actually call a foul on Spencer for terrible acting. I mean, play basketball, my God. Wilburn did absolutely nothing. That was, yeah, Phil's telling them right now, you gotta watch Munger Vision. You'll see the real story. Oh, Spencer, I just, I know if, if you can sell it, that's great, but you gotta make it look a little bit more realistic. Oh, Yops just paid him the favor. <laughs> Goaltending called on Jackson. Yops, Evan Yops just took a dive. That was a god awful. I'm glad they didn't call the ball. <laughs> oh, well, I can't complain that the other end now, Spencer and Yops are even in bad acting jobs. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's heating up. Jackson from the free throw line got it. Oh, the big man can hit that shot all day. 63-42. Yeah, that acting was so bad, I thought I was watching a Lindsay Lohan movie. Oh, my God. I'll tell you the defense right now. Let that back door cut go. And shot missed by Kopp and was tipped around. And now Wilburn will give it up to Urida. And the defense claps around him. And the shot from the baseline. Good by Wilburn. Now they're going to have an official's timeout. Now what happened here? Yeah. He went through the cylinder. And they're going to give him a warning for a delay of game, I believe. Okay, I was completely wrong. What it is, is on the goaltending call against Jackson. They want to confirm it was a two-point basket, not a three-point basket. So that's what it was, and they've corrected it now at the scores table. Fairhaven girls basketball coach Kyle Wilson down there running the scoreboard today in the time clock. And doing a dapper job, I must say, doing a very good job. And Corrigan. Oh, great move and foul. Yeah, that's a good call. Jackson got him with the lower body, made a clean block up top. And I'll tell you what, Corrigan beat Wilburn off the dribble, and I didn't really think that was possible, but he will go to the line now. It's going to be the second foul on Jackson, third on the team, 65-44, 14-18 to go in the second half of play, and still CSJ looking to go 2-1 and one in conference play with a win today, and then, of course, Fort Kent, ranked number one in their division coming in tomorrow, and I'll have that game for you at a later day. Corrigan will rattle it in, cut the lead back to 20. And again, I can't urge you enough to get down in person to watch CSJ men's basketball action. Right up behind the back, and Spencer this time stayed up. Baseline, Yops can't get the finish. Jackson! Got the finish, K.J. Jackson with the offensive rebound off the missed shot from Yops will get the basket. Corgan that time played the trap beautifully. McDonald foul, caught it, going to line. McDonald with the basket and one. One five, so I'll be Jackson picking up his third foul. Oh, don't forget, no lead, insurmountable. And Brendan Rios coming in now. For Wilburn, for CSJ, so Rios coming in. It's Wilburn making sure that was the change. Wilburn, a very animated individual, very good facial expressions out there when you watch them. Very entertaining to watch. And I've seen no move to the bench with Jackson with the three fouls stays in the ball game. Raheem Smalls will get the rebound and. Again, Umpy might have a run in him here. They had a run at the end of the first half. Ryder with the catch, and Umpy going, looks his own. I gotta wait and watch here. Whatever it was, it sure left a wide open shot, and the rebound missed, and Rios with a second attempt will get it. Yeah, I mean, that was a pretty gapped 
wide gap defensive set by Yeah, it's going to be a defensive kick. There'll still be 25 seconds on the shot clock. And Manifold going to try to post up Jackson. Spencer will take the ball out of bounds. And yeah, what, the, what they're going to call, and Ryda is just so much fun to watch. Accidentally, the umpy coach, and he's a cool guy. No, he's all right. He accidentally got in the way of the play and held the ball up, and it, would have, it was a great effort by Ryder to make the save. That's a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Okay. That's what I thought I was looking at before. It's more definitive now. Jackson. Oh! Okay. Down, down. Jackson hitting a three ball. 72 48. 72 points by the Saints with still almost 13 minutes to go. Corrigan creating that all by himself. There was no defense that time played by the Saints. Yops with the reverse. Got it. Oh, I'll tell you what. This is fun basketball, in my opinion. I like that up and down the floor stuff. Jackson will knock it away from Manifold. Tell you, Jackson focused in the game today. And when he is focused, he is a very type of player can dominate his position on the floor. Even though he's playing opposition. Dane Yops coming in for Evan Yops. So pretty much the Saints trade up for a newer model. Get two years a younger model out there on the floor. McDonald up and no. Rebound will come down to Smalls. And there's the outlet to Ryder. The quick push to the elbow and Ryder. To Jackson. On the move. Beautiful. Oh, they're going to call an offensive foul. Yeah. Coach Bartlett, that is a six offensive foul called on the Saints today. And the basket waved off. 74-50. Saints with the lead on the defense. That's four fouls on Jackson now. And that was quite a defensive let go as Corgan just left alone will swish it. I'm not sure what the Saints did or did not communicate there, but a breakdown there defensively. 12 minutes to go in the basketball game. Ryda to Yops to Jackson and oh look at Smalls got strip going up it's going to stay with the Saints as Triplett Patrick Triplett Jr. coming in for CSJ and he is going to replace well I thought he pointed at Jackson okay so KJ Jackson going to sit down now and catch his breath and also he's got four personal fouls foul wise it's five team fouls on CSJ and one on Umpy. Weak side rebound triplet and Coffin battle for it. It'll be Coffin coming down with it. Corrigan. Oh, there's a slide along the baseline reversal. Count the basket. Clifford McDonald with the bucket. And Smalls, I believe, just joined the four foul club. And I'll wait for it to become official on the board. But Smalls called for the foul. And, and it's a 16 foul. And it is fourth personal, so yeah, both Jackson and Smalls with four personal falls apiece. As Miguel Vasquez coming in number 20 for Umpy, he's going to replace Coffin. Then Evan Yops and Tony Wilburn coming in for CSJ as Ryda and Smalls will sit down. Okay, now it looks like all the changing is complete. I'm just looking out there. Yeah, Hutchins, number 10, has come into the basketball game for Umpy, and I'm assuming he'll run the point now. And that shot good. That'll complete the three-point play, and with 11.36 to go. Triplet down the floor, got it. Oh, Patrick Triplet Jr. Getting it down the floor and getting it done with the made basket. Corgan guarded by Travel. Yeah, that's a great call. Dane Yops, Tony Wilburn, Evan Yops, Patrick Triplett Jr., and Brendan Rios. A five on the floor for the Fighting Saints. And you can see Dane Yops, who's showing him he can hit from the outside. Throws cross, top of that defense. Rios posting up, and yeah, there's the foul. 
That has a great job of finding the matchup. Is real. It's just physically too big for Hutchins, and they posted him up, and then Reels fouled in the act of shooting. We'll get two shots. So Brendan Reels, we've seen throughout the season, able to hit that three ball on a regular, consistent basis, but has the size and agility to go down inside and play, just like we saw just now down inside. Got it. 77-55, lead goes to 22. As Rios set now, as he glances behind him and sees Hutchins and Corrigan both there. And the lefty will fire away and get it. Hutchins looking for Corrigan's ran the point here very effectively as far as they had a couple of different looks point guard wise in that first half and of all the point guards Corgan's ran the job the best. That's a three ball made by Vasquez. Wilbur, Wil Wilburn missed and Patrick Triplett Jr. on the weak side left alone will put the put back up and in and make it an 80 point effort so far and still 10 minutes left in the basketball game. Manifold doubled, kicks the ball up top and Clifford McDonald got it. Fading away, falling back, made the basket. Wilburn with the play call. Rios off the screen. No. A couple Saints trying to keep the ball alive, but it's going to be McDonald working against Wilburn. McDonald got beat to the spot. Turns inside. There's the help defense, and they're going to call Rios for the foul. Everything was right, and he did commit the foul. I mean, he was in the right spot. He stepped up to help out, but he got him on the arm. They called it a push, but. And Anderson, number 10 now, will be checking in at the scores table for CSJ. As Clifford McDonald will roll that one in. And it's going to be Rios sitting down, so Brendan Rios. And Smalls with the four falls and all will be coming back in the basketball game. He'll replace Patrick Triplett Jr. That's a CSJ change. You go to pegtv.com, click video on demand. You can watch Munger Vision anytime you want, anywhere on the internet. Also, just turn your channel TV on to channel 15. Especially Saturday afternoons at 4. You can watch local sports from 4 o'clock in the afternoon to 8 o'clock Sunday morning. Yops, great hands. Yops got it. I tell you, Yops, they just had a breakout season this year for CSJ. He's done an outstanding job of working on his game, improving his game, and being willing to learn more about his game. Oh, that's a terrible call. Yeah. I got to tell you, I mean, Corrigan's a gamer. As he uh, worked so hard to draw that fall, but that's now the eighth team fall on CSA. Two falls on Dane Yops. And I believe I'm looking on the floor. Yeah, Vasquez at the scores table. He's going to check in for Umpy, and I'm waiting to see who he's going to replace. So one, two, three, four, five. Spencer came out. Okay, so both Vasquez's are on the floor right now for Umpy. Corrigan's out there. Manifold's out there. And McDonald. And Dane Yops battling hard. We'll get the rebound. It's a one on one break, and Smalls will sidestep the defender and get it. And again, that's that shuffling on down the floor move that Smalls makes and was almost uncontested as you'll make the basket. 84 63. Well, that was one of the few times this season that Dane Yops has looked like a freshman. Now he. Just got flat-footed defensively, and actually, I think he was hedging to the baseline, and they turned to the paint, and then, of course, he got him on the arm on the shot. Ninth team foul. Third foul on Dane Yops. 84-63. 9.25 to go in the second half of play. There's Manifold. Again, probably about 40% from the line today, and she's had his problems there, and He'll miss that first one. Right now, he's just at the point where he's just thinking about it mentally way too much. Can I have the Fort Kent CSJ men's basketball game for you at a later date on Channel 15? 
and he'll miss them both. Evan Yop skying for the rebound. Up ahead to Smalls, and tell you, he was trying to, I'm not sure if he's trying to lay it up and over or dunk it, but good also by Evan Yops down the floor to get the missed shot and put it back. That's Vasquez to Vasquez, and not a lot of space there. As McDonald put it on the floor and travel. Yeah, the Saints closed down the lane there as they scissored them defensively. And it's going to be Wilburn now. Isolated against Vasquez, bringing the ball up the floor. Wilburn having a big ball game, lost the handle. Well, I'll just get ready to praise him and he lost the handle. 8.49 left in the second half. Hey, that's pretty much a very limited look the offensively. Just pretty much a couple of dribbles and then took the long shot. Now we'll give the Saints back the ball in possession with 8.32 to go. 24 on the shot clock and a hold called on Vasquez. Again, Wilburn taking him off the dribble just too fast. And that's just the third team foul. There'll be no shots. It's a possession foul. It'll be side out to CSJ. Dane Yacht's going to take the ball out of bounds. And I guess Ryder not coming in. OK. Now Ryder coming over to check in at the scores table. Remember Ryder in the beginning of the ball game picked up two quick fouls and settled down nicely. Dane Yops got it. Oh, great Dane from the outside. And Corgan, I mean, he's logged some major minutes today. Corgan has. Fades, fires, no good. Rebound tipped out, and Evan Yops on the brakes. Got a two on two, and got to have the basketball, and he will go hard up into the stands. And looks like he's going to be all right. Well, he landed by a pretty hot looking woman over there, so that's not bad. That will make the hurt go away. Good hustle by Yops. That Saints will retain possession. And the Saints somehow got the ball back, and it'll be Anderson now. And I'm not sure if I could have caught that, Pat. That was, that was as hard a pass as John Elway threw his whole career. And it didn't connect. And it'll be a turnover on the Saints. And Corgan. Yeah, the clock won't start until Corgan makes the touch. Now he'll pick it up. He'll push the ball inside. And Manifold to the left hand. And then a good box out by Dane Yops. Up ahead to Smalls. And he'll slow the pace down as he crosses the timeline. Anderson catches, fires from the elbow, and no good. Evan Yops got the rebound. We'll put it on the floor, swing it to his brother, and oh. That was a beautiful play for somebody that didn't make a basket. That was a beautiful job of knowing where each other was going to be and then pass the ball. Ryda had the ball tipped to him and then held by Corrigan. And then some extracurricular activity. <laughs> and everything's fine. As Corrigan called for the foul. Corrigan's got to be somewhat fatigued and exhausted. I mean, I don't believe he's come out in the second half till right now. Yeah, and, and Spencer, number three, coming in the ball game for University of Maine Presque Isle. 89-63 CSJ. Ryder came back to make himself available to the pass, and Dane Yop set the screen. Yops will hold the ball up top. They wanted the screen and roll with Smalls, but it was set up way too high to work, and then the ball knocked away, turned over, and Vasquez, alley open it to Manifold, up and got it. Nice pass by Vasquez to Manifold. As Ryder isolated against Vasquez now. We'll go behind the back to the middle of the floor and nearing the timeline and we'll cross it now. Of course, Ryder, outstanding leader on the floor for CSJ. As Anderson to Ryder and they'll run the wheel up top. Vasquez trying to sneak up behind Ryder as he made the call and Jamie will get inside and get it. Oh, what a pretty shot. He just took his time setting the defense up and then made that look awful easy. Now they need some help and Ryder able to go underneath the screen this time. 
as Vasquez faked the three ball, kicks it out to Spencer. He'll fire inside, and this is McDonald's tripped and fouled. And I'm not sure who's going to get the foul here on CSJ. Dane Yops will get the foul, and I'll send Clifford McDonald to the line to shoot a couple and stops the clock with 6.09 to go. And it's also the fourth foul now on Dane Yops. So there's KJ Jackson, Dane Yops, and Raheem Smalls, all with four personal fouls. I like the fact, too, in the second half, there have not been a lot of timeouts taken. Right now there's a little break in the action because the officials are cleaning up a wet spot on the floor. And Clifford McDonald now all set to step up there and shoot two. That'll be two the rest of the night as that's the 10th team fall on CSJ. And that's going to drop. KJ Jackson coming in and he's going to replace Dane Yops. So a couple first-year players here at CSJ swapping out. Hey, McDonald with the basket, and now pressure extended in the backcourt by Umpy. And stolen away as a behind-the-back pass didn't work, and Vasquez up, and they'll miss the alley-oop dunk shot, and Anderson <clears throat> will get the foul, and he got his money's worth on it, and that's... I'll tell you, if they pull that off, that's a beautiful move as McDonald went up to jam at home, and... Just missed the dunk. <laughs> and I'll send Vasquez, the lefty up there, and he will roll it in. As Wilburn <clears throat> coming in for Anderson. And Anderson with two fouls now in the basketball game. With the pressure again, extending the backcourt, and Ryda going to push the ball up the floor, right to the middle, right up the paint, and all oh, great look to Yops, and the finish! That's pushing the ball baseline to baseline by Ryda, always knowing where his teammates are. Got the beautiful pass off to Evan Yops, who made the finish. Spencer, way outside, trying to work off a couple different screens, and ball knocked away by Raheem Smalls. Now they're trying to get it down into Guelph Vasquez, number 20. And Umpy will replace, will retain possession with 23 seconds to go. And KJ Jackson, that's in the shot clock, came around and knocked the ball away. Wilburn, the Yops foul, got it. Tell you what, Evan Yops with a strong finish. Yacht in the basket, good, and one coming up for Evan Yops. And again, they did get down the floor. And so Evan, who's actually a pretty good free throw shooter, will put it up and got it. And Smalls on the floor a lot today. We'll get up and look around. 5.30 to go in the basketball game. 96-69 CSJ. They'll go to 2-1 and one in Sunrise Conference play. And boy, I tell you what, that's a nice finger roll by Vasquez. And Evan Yoff said, what are you giving me the ball back for? And he'll hand it right off to Wilburn. And a foul on Miguel Vasquez as he got in there and, I mean, to me it's a blocking foul, but what's what he calls? Push? Okay, we'll go with that. There's Ross Saunders in the ball game for Manifold. That's a University of Maine press file change. <clears throat> and what it is, K.J. Jackson doing a little cleanup work with the towel. Saunders just using his foot. Where Saunders came in with a minute to go in the first half and picked up a foul at the buzzer. And that's been about his only playing time. That last personal foul was the second foul on, yeah, blocking foul calls. Again, Miguel Vasquez just standing stationary and then leaning in to the offensive player. And that's going to be Raheem Smalls. And Small stepping up to the line with still 5.07 to go. That's going to be the third foul now on Miguel Vasquez. And Raheem taking his time at the line to get set. Will coil up and got it.
Now it looks like Rios is going to be coming back in the basketball game for CSJ. No, he's going to sit down again. He was up talking with Coach Bartlett and whatever it was, it was not a time to insert him in the lineup as Wilburn pressuring the ball all the way down the floor. I'll tell you, Vasquez got down in the paint and had nowhere to go with the basketball. McDonald, hook, no good. Foul. As Miguel Vasquez just picked up number four, I believe. And that's three fast ones on him. That's his fourth total. And I'm looking for Evan Yobbs as he will step to the line to take the shots for CSJ. Jeremy Brock, 34 in the ballgame for McDonald. As he'll sit down. He's playing with foul trouble also for Umpy. Okay, so Evan Yobbs. That's just the eighth team foul on the Owls. An English major with the basket. Looking for the 100th point of the, the afternoon for CSJ. It'll be the back-to-back -back games that they would hit the century mark. Remember yesterday scoring 108 points against University of Maine and Chias. And they have done it again. So back-to-back -back games of 100 points or more. And they're tuned up. I'll tell you, they're playing about as well as they can be tuned up to play Fort Kent tomorrow. And that will miss. So Spencer with the shot. Small's got the rebound with the one hand, held on to it, and we'll give it back to Ryder. Now Ryder will set the table and run the show with four and a half minutes to go here from the CSJ Athletic Complex as Rios and Triplet both now at scores table for CSJ. Yops up and no. Rebound on the weak side by Spencer. The, the Saunders who came down and just stuck himself to the floor so he wouldn't pick up the travel call. Vasquez, no front rim to Jackson with the box out. But Brock and Saints with possession here. Spencer matching up with Ryda. Wilburn steps off the screen. No. Rebound will be Vasquez. That's a good job, though, of setting up the screen to take the shot. And Wilburn will get the fall. Wilburn lobbying for. The call, and Smalls tell him it ain't going to be you, so it will be access to Wilburn, and that will send Miguel Vasquez to the line. That's the third foul on Wilburn. Again, that's a cool feature that uh, Saturday afternoon ball game. If you can go to Saturday afternoon at four o'clock, put it on channel 15, your TV set, and the time light bulb just starts playing local sports at four. P.M. Saturday afternoon, right through to Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. Brennan Morton, number 12 in the ballgame now for Umpy as Smalls comes off to a standing ovation, well, semi-standing ovation. I think the Grand Union CSJ player of the game is pretty obvious today. It's going to be K.J. Jackson for his outstanding play. So K.J. Jackson will be the CSJ Grand Union player of the game. He'll get the donated T-shirt from Grand Union. And Tallarico going to be coming in. That's Andrew Tallarico, number 31. As Wilburn will go back and get the basketball now. Rios. There's the screen on Morton. Rios with the give back to... Oh, look at the passing triplet. No. Rios. No. Rios. Got it. Rios working on those boards. We'll get the basket. And Give Triplet some credit there too. He did a nice job. So Rios will get the bucket and one. And Rios coming over to get his high fives. Well, those were actually pretty level, hip, hip, lip level fives. And Wilburn will sit down and that is Andrew Tallarico, number 31, into the basketball game. And Jonathan Tallarico, number three, going to be coming in also. So Saints have this one pretty much under control. 102-73. And Brendan Rios, got it. And Yops will give way. Oh yeah, like I said, I don't think the Saints could be any more prepared for Fort Kent than what they are right now. Played Thursday, looked good, had Friday off to rest. Played today, looked real good. Didn't really spend, nobody overplayed minutes today. Everybody should be fresh for tomorrow. Up block, right down in the hands of 
Umpy, and they'll put it up and in. That was Saunders that put the shot up and in. And Andrew Tallarico running the point now. He'll bring the ball up between circles, keep the dribble alive, and finds K.J. Jackson. Jackson with the fake jumper will go up and slam at home. K.J. Jackson, the CSA player of the game, with an exclamation point on this effort tonight. And Tallarico with the contact. And that'll be Andrew Tallarico with the foul. And that will send number 14, Chad Duff, to the line. Well, it's all smiles today at CSJ. But I do expect game faces tomorrow when I get here and they get ready for their warm-up. Tell you what, I didn't catch it, but the biggest high five of all was Coach Bartlett to KJ Jackson, indicating a job well done today. And I don't think I hit anything. That's a violation. So Tallarico will be pressured in the backcourt by Morton. Morton and Tallarico. Of course, Tallarico, the twins out there, Jonathan and Andrew, they're claim to fame to this point, besides being good athletes and funny guys, as they came all the way from Alaska to play basketball here at CSJ. 107 points so far on the board for the Fighting Saints. And Tallarico able to get away with one there as he overcommitted to the ball. Duff will give the ball back, and that jumper will be good by Jeff Morton. So there's a couple Mortons out there, I believe, I'm correct, for Umpy. Boy, Tallarico wide open, but wanted to run through the set call on the play. Yops. Penetrates, jump steps, couldn't finish. Up, triplet, no good. Tallarico kept the ball alive. Yops had the ball stolen away. They're on the floor and jump ball is. I just need a number. That's Jonathan Tallarico, number three. And for Umpy, 22, Jordan Bragan coming in the ball game. And Tallarico, she has 31, so it's going to be Andrew Tallarico. He'll run the ball and play in that stack formation. Oh, looking for an assist. Tallarico to Yops to the basket. 109, 78, and still 90 seconds to go in the ball game. Anderson got called for the foul. Yeah, he got away with the first reach, but they got him on the grab on the second one. Yep. And that will stop the clock at a minute 32. And that will send Jordan Bragg into the line. He'll front rim. It kind of rushed his shot there, and he came up short and front rimmed it. And you can't get the second one. Tallarico with the rebound. This is Jonathan Tallarico. No, this is Andrew Tallarico. And he'll work the ball into the front court. He'll keep that dribble alive. And Needs some help now, and Anderson came back, made himself available for the pass. To Dane Yops, they're looking for the cut along the baseline from Tallarico. To triple it up, and no. Rebound, a one and done, as here comes the Owls on the break to Duff. Duff pulls up, and no good. I'll tell you what, Tallarico altered the shot, as Yops will take the ball away behind the back, and oh, I don't think Triplet expected it. Yeah, he's got a big smile, because that was a little showtime that he didn't get down there as the pass behind the back from Dane Yops, who's looking more and more like a senior in college playing out there. Well, like I said, it's all smiles today as they'll go to two and one in Sunrise Conference play. The Fighting Saints. Anderson, the triplet, up, got it. 111 points now for CSJ. It's I, gotta, I can't tell you enough to get down in person to catch these games live. And then the ball taken away by Dane Yops running the floor. He's got a three on two. Dane behind the back. The triplet to the hole and he'll get it. The steal by Anderson. The foul. Anderson's going to go to the line. And right now Saunders is talking to himself. It looked like about eight different players on the floor for the Saints. They're just so quick. They're quick in the starting five, and they get quicker when they, as they come off the bench. So, well, maybe not quicker, but as quick. 
And so Anderson. We'll get that shot. Hundred and fourteen points from a complete team effort. And he'll roll them both in. But I'll tell you, Dane Yops, as a freshman, still got some growing to do. Big kid now. But he's got the instincts and the technique down. I mean, he's just going to be a dominant player. 12 seconds left in the basketball game. And that will squirt free. Tallarico leading the break. This is Anderson with the basketball. He'll curl and pull it out. And I don't believe that. That's going to be the ball game. 115 to 78. The Fighting Saints with the win over University of Maine Presque Isle. KJ Jackson, player of the game. Get out there, support Saints basketball. And I always remember this is Munger Vision.